Good morning and welcome to worship at St. John's Lutheran Church on this, the second Sunday of Advent. If you'd be so kind, please take just a moment to find the brown welcome pad in your pew somewhere and let us know that you've joined us for church today. If you want to update a phone number or your address, that's an easy way to do that. And if you have a prayer concern that you would like shared during the service this morning, please write that person's name on the back side of the slip and you can pass in the prayer concern. Our ushers will be collecting those during our first hymn. The brief order for confession and forgiveness is found in the very front of your red hymnal. Would you please rise and face the cross at the back of the church at this time? Dear friends in Christ, St. John reminds us that if we tell ourselves we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of God, our Father has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake, forgives us all of our sins as a called and ordained minister of the church of Christ and by his authority I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our gathering hymn is number 264.
Our service continues in the front of your hymnal at small page number 138. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. Alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father, Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to prepare the way of your only Son, by his coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives, for we ask this through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40. In grand, flowing, poetic lines, the prophet announces that the exile of God's people in Babylon is over. The Lord will deliver Israel and will care for her as a shepherd cares for his sheep. This word can be trusted because the only enduring reality in life is the word of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and, the pe and all the people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out! And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers. The flower fades. 
When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is, our, is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother's sheep. The word of the Lord. Please join me in a responsive prayer of Psalm 85, verses 1 through 2 and 8 through 13. Lord, you were favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful to those who turn to him in their hearts. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. The second reading is from the book of 2 Peter, chapter 3. St. Peter deals with pressing concerns regarding the final advent of Jesus, especially concerns that could arise over its apparent day, apparent delay. Peter calls on Christians to anticipate the promised coming of the Lord through conduct dedicated to God. 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 8-15 through 15. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolves, and the elements melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. The Gospel of Mark does not begin with the story of Jesus' birth, but rather with the story of the one 
the voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. The reading from Mark chapter 1. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now, John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated, and kids, I invite you to come forward for our children's time together this morning. I'd also like to invite the congregation to please turn in your hymnal to hymn number 677, because in just a moment we're going to light the Advent candles. All right, boys. <clears throat> Good morning. Now, today's gospel reading, the story from the Bible this morning, is about John the Baptist. And it's a good thing that you're standing here at the baptismal font, right? Because what John the Baptist did, he baptized people, right? That's why he has that name. And he told the people, repent, for Jesus is coming soon. All right? So, if I'm John the Baptist, right, and you guys have all come to be baptized, we would baptize you for the forgiveness of your sins and for repentance, for saying I'm sorry, but John had something else that he wanted to tell people. He wanted to say, look, look over there. See that guy? That's, this is what John the Baptist would say. He'd say, that is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. He is the one who's going to baptize you, not just with water, but with the Holy Spirit, too. Now, John was so concerned in pointing out Jesus, right? And John, he wasn't concerned about what he wore, the clothes that he had to put on, right? Does one of you want to, can I have a volunteer here? Carter, you want to do this for me, right? John the Baptist wore camel's hair. He wore a coat of camel's hair. You don't want to do this? All right. You guys want to do this? I'll wear it, huh? Yeah. He didn't care what kind of clothes he wore, so he wore camel's hair. You want to see how fuzzy that is? Feel that? I don't think the camel's hair was this soft. This is fake. John the Baptist wore real camel's hair. And he didn't care anything at all except saying, look, there's Jesus. Look, there's the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So John didn't care what he wore for his clothes. He was happy just to wear a clothing, a garment of camel's hair. So you can take this to remind you of that. Okay? And you know what he ate for food? You want to guess? Bugs. I know, how about that, huh? Wild locusts and wild honey. He had to fight the bees to get to the honey right? So he had water and wild honey, and he ate locusts, grasshoppers, bugs. It doesn't sound very good, does it? He wore camel's hair for his clothing. He wasn't worried. He wasn't concerned about what he ate or what he wore for his clothes. His only concern was baptizing people and pointing out, Jesus is coming soon. Isn't that pretty cool? And Jesus will give you the Holy Spirit. Would you fold your hands, boys, and we'll have a prayer here. And after our prayer, we're going to light the Advent candle, 
and sing that hymn, okay? So let's pray. Dear God, thank you for sending John the Baptist to point out Jesus. Help us always look for Jesus even today in our world and in our lives. Thank you, O Lord, for John the Baptist, and thank you for my baptism in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing verses 1 and 2 of hymn number 677, This Little Light of Mine. it shine let it shine let it shine let it shine sisters and brothers in christ grace to you and peace from the light of the world our lord jesus christ amen isn't that a great hymn this little light of mine i'm going to let it shine that is who we are as christians that's what the name Christian means. Little Christ. For there is indeed truly a little bit of our Lord Jesus Christ in each of our hearts. And so we hope that the light of Jesus Christ shines out in the darkness. For we know that the darkness never overcomes our Lord. At this time of year, <clears throat> you see people uh, typically put up a lot of little lights on their house. Outdoors and indoors, they decorate for Christmas. Right? They adorn with wreaths and garlands, and they put up ornaments at the top of the tree. Typically, families will put up either the Star of Bethlehem or the Angel Gabriel. Right? And why do we do all of these things? What are we doing? Well, we are preparing our homes. We are preparing our families and our loved ones to look again for the one who has promised that he will come soon. That he is not slow in his coming. And though while we must wait, if we are able to do so patiently, we see that this time of waiting, in fact, can be a time of salvation. That as John the Baptist calls us to repent of our sins, we would do just that knowing and hearing, believing and trusting that whenever we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, forgives us fully and completely, always. This is a great time of year. Um, and as people decorate their homes and, and prepare to watch for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, sometimes, you know, things... Uh, uh, we get a little bit grandiose in our preparations, huh? There's a, a beautiful grandiosity, if I can put those two words together. It's a little bit of an oxymoron, I realize. But, but there's just a beautiful light display out west of town here on County Road 3, just, a, you know, just past uh, Bob's Drive-In Diner. It's put up by uh, Mark and Kathy Frericks. Is that right? The house right up by the vets? Yeah. You've seen the light display? Uh, they start putting it out, I think, gosh, yet even in October, because there's so many lights that it takes that long just to get them all put up. And then they keep them up for the season of Christmas and for all of December. Remember, by the way, remember that the 12 days of Christmas, uh, they don't start on December 1st, right? You'd never get to the 25th if that were the case, huh? The 12 days of Christmas, in fact, start on Christmas Day, the 25th of December, and then continue on into January until we come to that moment of epiphany, the revealing, that aha, 
here is the Lord Jesus Christ. Those are the 12 days of Christmas. And then Christmas comes and Christmas goes. Another year uh, is in the books, as we would say. We go into the season of Lent, we prepare for Easter, and then all of a sudden it's summertime again. But you know, the funniest thing about, about all of that is you'll be driving down the road sometime in June, and you'll look over and you'll notice, hey, that guy still has his Christmas lights up, right? You've seen that every once in a while. Someone who leaves the decorations up year-round. And you think, to, you think to yourself, at least I think to myself, I think, boy, doesn't that guy know Christmas is over? Why well, is his lights up still? It's a new season. And then I think to myself, what a wonderful thing to leave your Christmas lights up year-round. Well, what do we do? It tells the world that the light of Christ shines in the darkness and is not overcome. It shows to the world, to all the nations, that here in our homes and in our hearts lives the spirit of Christmas year-round, day in and day out, season after season. For that is what the name Christian means. Little lights that twinkle as they watch for and await the coming of our Lord. How do we prepare ourselves to receive the Lord? Whenever we hear God's word, whenever we sing God's praises, whenever we join our hearts together in prayer, for it's not as though that life is just all sunshine and roses, summertime and happiness. And in those difficult moments, what are we called to do as the light of Christ? But to be a help to our sisters and brothers in need and to show kindness to those who stand in any difficulty. And so, dear sisters and brothers in our Lord Jesus, as you watch for and await the coming of our Lord, my invitation to you is this. Leave your lights up all season long, all year. Amen. Let's rise and join our voices in singing hymn number 272.
The confession of our Christian faith is found with the words of the Apostles' Creed at the back of your hymnal. Together, let us confess our belief. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Please be seated as we prepare our hearts for prayer. Let us pray for the whole Christian church in our Lord Jesus Christ and for all people the world over according to their needs. O Lord our God, we ask that you so open the eyes of our hearts that we may see our Lord Jesus, that you would unstop our ears, that we may hear those who cry out and call in his name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the day of peace in our world, in our lives, in our homes, and in our community. We ask that your blessings would be upon all those the world over who struggle in any way, who suffer from oppression or hardship or violence. We ask that you would watch over them, O Lord, and that you would let your Holy Spirit rest upon them. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those who have suffered in the fires in California. We ask, O oh Lord, that you will quickly extinguish those blazes and that you will help all those and strengthen all who need to rebuild. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those in our own midst who need your support and tender care, your healing and your touch. And so especially this morning, we think of Tim Arlene, Richard, and Jane, we pray for Iris and Alma, for Ken and Doris, Morgan and Kay. Pour out your spirit, O Lord, upon Scott and Bridget, upon Alice and Loretta, and bless and watch over all those we name now in the quiet of our hearts. To these, your children, O Lord, we ask that you give every blessing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O Lord, for the lives of all the saints. And we give you thanks that you have taken unto your tender care our friends Glenda and Judy, Linda. We ask that you bless their families, so strengthen and encourage them that they would look forward to the day when we shall, together once again, stand as one people at the great banquet table in heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands then, dear Heavenly Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us rise and share Christ's peace with one another. With thanks and praise, let us offer our gifts to the Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts towards those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care, and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our salutary joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Friends in Christ, in the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body that is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now the table has been set and all is prepared and our Lord says, come and dine. And so regardless of whatever congregation you would ordinarily attend, you are welcome at the table. Please be seated following the directions of your ushers.
And so may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you and strengthen you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our sending hymn this morning is number 239. Please be seated. Briefly, we want to highlight a few announcements for you. Our brothers and sisters are listed in the prayers in your bulletin, and if you would please take your bulletin home with you and remember those friends throughout the week in their time of need. If you're visiting today, welcome. We invite you to grab a gift bag on your way out of church. There's going to be a service at 3 p.m. next Sunday, uh, a service of hope and healing for any who mourn the loss of a loved one in this past year, and so you're invited to that service. It's always a beautiful time. If you painted Christmas ornaments, they're ready to be picked up, and they're out in the lobby, so you can grab those. And if you would uh, be interested in the Creative Giving Seminar for the Rooted and Growing Campaign, that's going to happen uh, this coming Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. It'll be about uh, 30 minutes or so in length, and there'll be some nice refreshments. It'll be right in the church library. If you'd like to help uh, prepare the charitable fund for St. John's for the next year, you can sign up for the family Christmas card. It's out in the narthex. It looks like this beautiful uh, blue banner of joy. And so that's where you can sign your name and make a donation. Thanks for uh, those who are attending the tour of homes today. I don't think it's too late to buy a ticket yet if you'd like to go see some beautiful Christmas decorations and lights. That effort is in support of the students who are attending the National Youth Gathering, and so they thank you very much for that support. They're also uh, raffling off, auctioning off, I should say, a beautiful quilt donated by Ginny uh, Fryermuth. And so thanks to Ginny, you can see that quilt right outside the church sanctuary here this morning. So with that, we invite you to please stand for the benediction. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to